Sarah, I will come to you first with this one. I'm wondering when you first pitched the season to Amazon, what was the roadmap for the show? What did you uh, have in mind in terms of, you know, things like how many seasons and did you have a loose idea of maybe where you wanted it to end? I think I pitched a four season arc. Um, so intent, Amazon. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, and I always had in my mind loose vignettes I mean, this is a coming of age story. So when you're crafting that, I think it's important to have the beginning of immaturity and then like the coming of age, the actual metamorphosis in the chrysalis moment. And then the coming like of age coming out of that into some kind of adulthood or more maturity. We want to tell that whole story. So I didn't so much think of how Gretchen's conspiracy would devolve but I definitely did craft vignettes of each character for what I wanted to see from them um, as they emerged from coming of age, how this experience formed them. Um, that kept me focused on the character level because um, I knew we could manipulate the conspiracy um, how, how we needed um, and how we thought Gretchen would go forward with that. All right, Amy, I'll throw this one to you now. So did the response to season one change anything in terms of what you all had planned for season two, whether it's, you know, due to something you yourself learned while making season one or something that viewers really responded to that you decided you wanted to lean into more? Well, first off, I think I was, um, so I'm such a scared worrier um, and assuming, especially in today's TV landscape, that there will be, not only will there not be like any groundswell of like there'll be nobody watching and you have no impact. Um, Sarah in the room would sometimes say like, I hope if there's fan art and I would just be like, oh, there's the, like, we're, we're gonna be lucky if any. So the thrilling thing to see, not only was there fan art, but then people started doing fan art of us. I was so blown away by the response and so touched and thrilled. Um, that we had um, spoken to the audience, which is all you ever want to do as writers of television is actually um, have people feel moved by it. Um, I think uh, for me, having done this before and had fans come to a show, I think um, I really wanted to be sure, however it went, we really just stayed true to our vision of what the show was because I think people came to the show because... Sarah built these very deep characters that we continued to grow and make deeper as the season went on. Um, and then I thought our job in this season was we were adding eight new characters was to honor those characters in the same way and to just continually deepen um, our female relationships and what they were going through as a team and then to explore these new characters. And obviously Shoni became something we, uh, you always hope, but we hadn't expected that. Um, so I think Sarah says this, like we come in every day making sure we're, we were honoring those uh, women and sort of what they had come to mean to the fans. Great success in that respect. So one of my absolute favorite things about your show is how many incredible young actors that it's introduced me to. And a lot of them are getting their first screen credits here. So for both of you, uh, I was curious, why do you feel that it was important to find newer talent and fresh voices rather than, you know, when you get an opportunity to make a season two of an Amazon show, building your ensemble with more familiar faces that, you know, could bolster the star power of the show in that sense? I think certainly in the first season and as well as in the second, um, we wanted the characters themselves to be extremely, extremely relatable. We're trying to reflect reality as much as we can. Um, you know, anyone, um, you know, that I don't know, has too huge of a profile, I think would have, um, I don't know, uh, maybe thrown the balance off um, among the casts. Um, and so, you know, finding these uh, fresher faces, um, this untapped talent um, has allowed them to really like be just as they're thrown onto the island, a lot of them have been thrown into this, you know, experience of making a television show. And it actually reflects beautifully on screen that how it resonates actor to character. It's like, oh, this newness, all this. And it really, it sort of shows up on screen in the most beautiful way. 
Um, and it is just a thrill to find someone, you know, and you're, you're nervous, but then they just bloom. Um, it's such a joy. Radiates off screen and it hits our level because it's the, it's like an absolute joy to see a show and to see someone you've never seen on screen before. And then I just like feel the urge to keep following them no matter what projects they go on to next. I love it. Yeah. Um, I have to say just as a shout out, like our casting director, Deanna, without her skill, her beautiful skill set of both finding these new talents and then working with them. So we knew even before we got them onto the island of Australia and the islands that we were creating, we had such confidence in um, the people we were choosing, even though a lot of them didn't have the experience because she's just brilliant. All right. This is like my big burning question here, because this is what I was most nervous about going into the new the new season. So I was very excited about the idea of meeting the group that was uh, the Twilight of Adam. But I got like a little nervous at the end of the season that, oh, no, if you add a whole nother group of characters, I'm not going to have enough time with the original ensemble. So what was the key to not just, you know, balancing those two groups of characters, but also the third that operate this whole thing and work in the bunker? Well, I think when we were boarding the stories, it's just like you have to look at the grid and be like, you know, are our women getting the richness, the storyness, uh, storylines that they deserve and that will continue to uh, engage the fans? And and also, they're just never going to leave our hearts and minds as the originators and the sort of soul of the show. Um, so we just were very intentional about that. And I think we're sort of in a weird way, Gretchen, <laughs> Sarah and I, and this, this is the only way we're like Gretchen. Um, the story of the women is sort of what inspired the show. So the boys are the control group. So even when you're watching the boys, I think you're thinking, oh, the women found water this way. And oh, they found sustenance this way. Um, so the boys become a real counterpoint to the girls. So I think it really allows uh, the audience to feel like even when you're with the boys, you're sort of watching them in comparison and counterpoint to the women you've already fallen in love with. It's especially well done and effective. You knocked it out of the parking. And I have like a mile long list of questions. I could take up your entire day, but I have to let you go. Huge congratulations on the wild season two. 